Hey folks, before we jump into this week's session, wanted to point out that I do this weekly, talk about Microsoft Cloud News and updates, everything regarding Azure, Office 365, Microsoft 365, Teams, and more. So if you like what you see, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and share on your favorite social media platform. Without further ado, let's jump into this week's session. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update, researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. I'm Carl Kischel. This week, we have a couple of updates to share with you, including some WVD enhancements, Azure backup enhancements, some Teams news, and others. Let's jump right into it. All the updates I'll be sharing this week, the links to those updates can be found in the description of this video. So our first update, is uh, pretty exciting around WVD and a new cost-saving measure called uh, Automatic Start VM on Connect. So what this is, is if you have a virtual machine within a WVD pool, and this is for a personal host pool, if that VM has been deallocated um, and a user tries to uh, attach to it or uh, connect to it, it'll automatically start up. So this is a great way to deallocate VMs that are part of your WVD personal host pools, uh, saving money, no consumption there, and then have them spin up and start automatically when an end user tries to connect to it. So this feature is currently in public preview and should be coming out shortly within the next couple of months to a general availability. So check out the link for more info. Our next update is around Azure Backup and the support for Azure Backup in uh, Azure dedicated hosts. So dedicated hosts are physical servers within the Azure Data Center that you are subscribing to. Um, Azure Backup now supports dedicated hosts. Check out the link for more info. We have a few roadmap items to share. The first is, um, regarding Azure Active Directory and temporary access passes. So TAPs allow you to connect or log into Azure Active Directory uh, without a password. Uh, the temporary access pass will give you a one-time access so you can configure a FIDO device, phone sign-in, et cetera. So it's a great way to add additional security to, to your Azure Active Directory environment. The uh, roadmap update says it's in development, but it's actually rolling out to tenants as we speak. The next roadmap update is regarding Microsoft Teams and the ability for Teams webinar capabilities are now generally available. So this is the ability to schedule and deliver webinars that support up to 1000 participants. It also includes facilities to support registration page creation email confirmation, host management, et cetera. So check out the link for more info. There's been a lot of interest in migrating data to Microsoft 365, particularly OneDrive and SharePoint. And uh, I thought this was really interesting and useful. This is an upcoming, upcoming webinar that will discuss best practices for data migrations and includes how to prepare for data migration, um, creating a communication plan, and how to execute a successful migration. And this is all about really OneDrive data going into OneDrive and SharePoint from other cloud services, from on-premises services, et cetera. It's delivered by one of our product group managers, and um, it's currently slated for April 13th. So definitely check out the link to register for this webinar. Our next update is actually regarding managing Windows 10 devices, services updates, including Microsoft Endpoint Manager, uh, formerly known as Intune and Configuration Manager. Uh, these office hours are geared around best practices for managing Windows 10 devices and their updates using those services. So these go, I believe, every month. So um, every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 
follow the links in this particular web page to sign up for these webinars and learn some best practices on how to manage Windows 10 devices using Endpoint Manager in Microsoft. Our second last update is regarding Microsoft Teams and what's new in February, March of 2021. So a lot of this I've covered previously in previous weekly updates, but this is a really nice summary in terms of what has happened in the last two months regarding Microsoft Teams. And there has been a lot, um, a lot of new functionality, features, applications, configuration settings, et cetera. So this web page does a really nice job in terms of collecting all these updates in a, in a single web page and giving you a really nice description. So definitely check this out for all the latest and greatest regarding Microsoft Teams. Um, my particular feature, um, favorite feature is regarding meeting recap. And uh, at the end of a Teams meeting, this new function that was recently released gives you an update on um, transcription, video recording, uh, chat tab, et cetera. So it's a, it's a nice all-purpose summary meeting recap that is now available within Microsoft Teams. Lots of other announcements in this web page, so check it out. And last but not least, wanted to share with you uh, this three-part blog series around business email compromises or BECs. And this uh, is very, very in-depth on not only what Microsoft is doing regarding um, fleshing out this type, these type of attacks and providing alertings, reports, uh, et cetera, and also preventing these from happening, but also kind of the, the art of the attack within itself. There's a lot of interesting detail here in terms of what happens regarding a phishing attack. If you're into security, a lot of this you will already know, but it's a really a nice summary in terms of what to look out for, um, but also how to leverage a lot of the existing Microsoft tools that you have access to to help prevent these type of compromises and attacks. So it's a three-part blog series. This is part one. Um, part two and part three have also been um, released as well. So check out all three parts. Um, pay a special attention to the hunting area of BEC attacks and leveraging the Threat Explorer within Microsoft 365 to better understand um, how your security operations can uncover these type of attacks and analyze these attacks if um, they are happening within your environment. So definitely check out all three parts of this blog post. Very interesting information. That concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you like this video or series, please give me a thumbs up. Also check out the uh, link to subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell. So when we do come out with these updates and occasional tips, you are alerted. Also feel free to share this video series with others, share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And if you have any comments that you'd like to share with me, feel free to use the comments section in the, uh, the video descriptions uh, as well. Or also you can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. So thanks again. Hope you have a great week and we will catch you next time. Take care.